picture used to be a sum of additions. With me, a picture is a sum of destructions. So it was throughout his career. Picasso constantly reinvented his style at a rapid pace. He created thousands of innovative sculptures, drawings, etchings, ceramics, and paintings. Neuroscientists have discovered that imagery like Picasso's invites viewers into the creative process with the artist. We relish taking incomplete clues and filling in the missing details. Picasso had an instinct for this dynamic long before science corroborated it. The picture lives only through the man who is looking at it. Picasso, the finest 20th century artist, Pablo Ruiz Picasso was born on October 25, 1881, in the southern Spanish coast. His father, Jose Blasco, supported his family by teaching drawing at the local art school. Picasso was introduced to art by his father at the age of seven. In the 1900s, Picasso exhibited 150 drawings, mostly portraits. He then bounced back and forth between Spain and Paris. Till the day his friend committed suicide in February 1901, when Picasso's art periods had finally appeared. The Blue Period The Blue Period of Picasso is the period between 1901 and 1904, when he painted essentially monochromatic paintings in shades of blue and blue-green, only occasionally worn by other colors. This all was inspired by the poor, blind, and depicting beggars of Paris. This period's starting point may have begun in Spain or in Paris. Picasso was influenced by journey through Spain and by the suicide of his friend Carlos Casagemas, who took his life in France. One of the most recognizable paintings is The Man and the Guitar. The painting shows a frail man cradling a guitar with his head bowed and eyes closed, expressing poverty and hunger when a guitar is his only comfort. The Rose Period The Rose Period of Picasso lasted from 1904 to 1906. This period signifies the time when the style of Pablo Picasso's paintings used cheerful orange and pink colors in contrast to the cool, somber tones of the previous blue period. During these few years, Picasso was happy in his relationship with Fernand Olivier. Harlequins, circus performers, and clowns appear frequently in the Rose period and will populate Picasso's paintings at various stages through the rest of his long career. At the age of 24, Picasso painted the boy with a pipe, which soon feigned him with its beautiful colors and flowers. Period. Picasso's African period lasted from 1907 to 1909. It all started when the traditional African sculpture became a powerful influence among European artists, who formed an avant-garde in the development of modern art. The resulting picture of flatness, vivid color palette, and fragmented cubist shapes helped to define early modernism, as you can see in the pictures inspired by the African masks and their colors. Cubism. Analytical cubism is one of the two major branches of the artistic movement of cubism and was developed between 1908 and 1912. Picasso and Braque worked together and developed what came to be known as analytical cubism. Early cubist paintings are often misunderstood by critics and viewers because they were thought to be merely geometric art. Yet the painters themselves believed they were presenting a new kind of reality that broke away from Renaissance tradition. And that reminds us of the argument that once happened between Picasso himself and one of the critics that ended up with, I don't draw for chicken. It all happened when someone criticized the famous painter Picasso by saying, you don't seem to know how to draw, you just know how to draw these lines and colors are meaningless. Picasso was only to take a pen and draw a grain of wheat on a paper and throw it on the floor. And the drawing was like real. Even one of the chickens tried to eat the grain of wheat. The critic was amazed and said to Picasso, why if you insist on these strange drawings and you improve drawing in such a wonderful way? Picasso replied quietly and confidently, actually, I don't draw for chicken.
searching for the most famous painting done by Picasso, it would probably be the Garnica masterpiece, which is certainly his most powerful political statement, pointed as an immediate reaction to the bombing practice in the Basque town of Garnica during the Spanish Civil War. Garnica shows the tragedies of war in the suffering it inflicts upon individuals, particularly innocent civilians. This work has gained a monumental status, becoming a perpetual reminder of the tragedies of war, an anti-war symbol and an embodiment of peace. This piece of art is a message for all the world to stop the ridiculous actions at war, for all people have the right to live. Speaking of which, this Garnica bombing took place in history on April 26, 1937, as Kana's massacre did on April 18, 1996. A massacre of same date but different places, where hundreds of children and families martyred, houses were destroyed, and even the rocks cried as the Garnica shows. But why not go back to the 14th century where Michelangelo first did his Pieta statue of Mary and Jesus? This statue that resembles Mary as holding the Christ between her hands would also remind us of a photograph of a father weeping on his killed daughter in Cana, or the pain of the mother who's screaming after her child's death in the Garnica. All of these types of art are the only hope for peace in life. So passed away on April 8, 1979, leaving behind him messages of peace, love and reality. He, as all other artists did, they reflected their feelings through a brush and created their own world. Then, why not use this Picasso message to build up a new future away from war and hatred? Note, you don't have to use logic to live, but use imagination instead. Funny facts about Picasso Picasso's first word, pencil. It's like Picasso was born an artist. His first word was peace, short of lapis, the Spanish word for pencil. His father, Rose, an artist and art professor, gave him a formal education on art starting from the age of seven. By 13, Rose vowed to give up painting as he felt that Pablo had surpassed him. When a Nazi officer saw Garnica, he asked Picasso, was you who did it? And Picasso is said to have responded, no, you did. Iconic striped shirt is no ordinary garment. Picasso's iconic shirt is a Breton striped shirt, which in 1958 became the official uniform for French seamen in Brittany. Picasso was also a leader in fashion, and his Breton striped t-shirt was designed by Coco Chanel. The 21 horizontal stripes represent each of Napoleon's victories. Привет, это фильм.